championship game bound. Boston College plays a complete game, wins 4 nothing with a few big goals and some great goaltending. We're going to get into today's epic win on today's show. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome, everyone. This is Locked On Boston College, your team every day. Big win today in BC hockey history as they're heading to the championship game. This is AJ Black. I'm the host of Locked On BC and editor of Eagle Insider. And joined today is my co-writer, BC hockey blogger. I couldn't think of anyone better to bring in today to talk about this win. How are we doing today? Hey, AJ. How you doing? Great win. Great oh, win. It felt good. Um, as someone who is, has, you know, with kids and things like that, I have not been the best hockey um, follower. I watched this game and I forgot how stressful <laughs> watching playoff hockey can be and, and tournament hockey. So watching this game for nothing, BC played well. They didn't play perfect, but they eke out the – not. it wasn't the eke out the win. They basically – they had this by the third period. Tell me some of the things that stood out to you about this game. I mean, my my first thought on this game was their team defense and their goal and the goaltending they got from Jacob Fowler. That that Michigan team scores the third most goals in the country. Uh, they're probably the, the the second best offense BC's played all year behind BU. And uh, you know, I thought BC did a really good job of keeping them to the perimeter. Uh, you knew Michigan was going to come hard in the third period. They did. Um, but it came down to limiting the grade A chances. And, you know, I, I couldn't have been more impressed by BC's penalty kill tonight. Uh, that's a, the not only the best power play in uh, college hockey, it's the best power play in college hockey over the last couple of years. I mean, they're 35.5%. That's unheard of. And uh, BC held them to 0 for 4. One was an abbreviated power play, but um, – just an unreal effort from their guys, especially on the penalty kill. And I think, you know, BC has been fortunate to have some really good goalies, really good freshman goalies, especially over the last 10, 15 years. Um, They've got a really, really special one in Jacob Fowler. And he he doesn't get the recognition that, you know, the the, the four first rounders get, but he, I, for my money, he's the main reason why they're playing on, on the final Saturday of the season. So let's get into this game. Let's start this off. So Den- uh, not Denver, uh, Michigan, we're, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Mm-hmm. Michigan yeah. goes ahead. You know, they go, they start to put a little bit of pressure. They make a mistake and Will Smith makes them pay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's back and forth. And to Michigan's credit, they, they put some good pressure on the Eagles early. But as you said, Fowler, and that defense, I thought the defense was tremendous. The way that they were able to 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 prevent Michigan from getting any really clean looks. They were always sticks everywhere, guys for you know with good checking and getting the puck out of the zone. Like there there was only a few times where I felt like Michigan had that going for them. But you get Will Smith going early. And let, while we while we're talking Will Smith, who had two goals in this game. Mm-hmm. I, let's start this early with a chance. I want to give you a chance, BC Hockey Blogger, to rant, because I know you have some real thoughts about this, about Will Smith getting snubbed for the Hobie Baker. Here's your chance to, to put it in audio format. Go for it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I wrote this last week. I think I think it's a joke that, he, that he's not uh, one of the final three guys. Jackson Blake, North Dakota, had a great year. Um, there's no denying that, but you look at the numbers. I mean, Smith Smith had had a better season. Um, it, it's it's really not close. Not only did he have a better season, he had the 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 highest point production um, of any college hockey player since 2016. Kyle Connor, and I think he, he he's either tied with Connor now, or he's one point off. Um, and he's obviously got another game left. So um, what he's done, he, he broke BC's freshman point record. He shattered it, record that I never thought would be touched. Um, you know, and, and everybody says, oh, he plays with two great players. But 
I, it's just ridiculous that this year that seemingly became a big excuse to, to leave him out of the Hobie. You know, it, so many good players in the past. Until he played with McGroody and Brindley last year, you never heard anybody say, oh, he plays with two great players. Ryan Duncan in North Dakota played with Oshie and Jonathan Tays, two of the best professionals of, of our of my lifetime. Um, and it was never it was never brought up then. But for, for whatever reason, it's a, it was a, an issue this year. Um, and I, I think they, they cheapened his candidacy for whatever reason. Um, I'm not saying he should have won. You know, I, I, I don't know if he's if he's better than Celebrini and Cutter or more deserving than those two. But um, I wrote this week, you know, I figured he'd come out flying in this game. And he was great. After two tough games in the Providence Regional, he was one of their best players tonight. Um, and I think uh, I think the fact that he's not on the final stage tomorrow is, is uh, a pretty big joke. So he scores the first goal. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the second period. And, you know, that first period, it felt like Michigan had a lot of chances to, to get that tie – to, to get the, right back into this and tie it. But it was in the second period that Will Smith hit uh, hits the second goal to put them up to nothing. And then you're starting to feel things. Yeah. What, what did you start to see about this team that made it feel like, even though Michigan, I thought Michigan played their game as well as they could, mm-hmm. that BC had every answer to everything that they threw at them. I think that for me, on the second goal, you know, you, you figured the se- you had the feeling the game was going. The second goal was going to be a huge goal. If BC could get that second goal, they would really, you know, grab hold of the game. And obviously, they got some puck luck. You know, was, I think Smith had the puck behind the net, centered it for Perot, and it, it hit it hit the Michigan defenseman and went in. Um, but I thought that over the course of the second period, they kind of sustained more offensive zone time than they did in the first period. They weren't as reliant on you know a transition offense. Um, and really outside of their goal in the first period, I, I didn't think they created much. They had two horrendous power plays in the yep. first period, um, got absolutely nothing going. Um, and you figured after that, that Michigan would, would, uh, would take advantage, but, um, BC killed off two penalties in the first 10, 12 minutes of the, of the second period. And, um, and then, and then, you know, that the Michigan fans were not happy with the penalty on Duke that led to the four-on-four. Four. BC scores two goals on, on the four-on-four. Four. So, um, and then as the game went on and BC extended their lead, you had to figure Michigan w- was going to really push, and they did, which led to some odd man rushes for BC. And um, obviously, Cutter, Cutter just – I couldn't, I couldn't be more impressed with him. And I, I know he's a first-round pick. I, he might win the Hobie Baker, but – his growth um, as a as a, a defensive player um, has has uh, not been talked about enough. He he's been out when they've had the last change against Celebrini. He's gone out there and outplayed Celebrini. When they had the last change against Michigan and their big guns, he went out there and shut them down. Um, it's not you know going to be all, all over the stat sheets, but um, his defensive effort. Uh, in their biggest games this year against the other team's top opponents has been absolutely spectacular. Now we're going to come back and talk about that blitz of goals that came uh, in that second period that put BC on top. And then um, we're going to get into Jacob Fowler a little bit more because I want to talk a little bit about his game because I think BC, I think he, he is going to be one of the most underrated goalies in, in college hockey. We'll get into him in just a moment, but we'll be right back. So, so don't go anywhere. Your ride or die, it's passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps it alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. With superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. (laughs) 
This is Locked On Boston College. AJ Black, we're talking a big win here for BC as they are heading for their 12th national title game, looking for their sixth star on the back of their jersey, their sixth national championship, where they're going to face Denver. Now, the star of this game, you may think, Will Smith, and I wouldn't argue with you, two goals, played excellent. You could say Carter Gauthier, who had some great plays as well. But as we said in that first segment, you got to look at Jacob Fowler. Watching this game, you know, at the beginning, I was waiting for, you know, those goals. Like, you're just waiting for them to score. And by the sec- later in the second period, you just got the sense that nothing was going to get by him. Like, he just never looked rattled. And um, Mitch Wolf tweeted uh, a, a great quote. And I would love your thoughts on this. He, you know, he was a student when Thatcher Demko was there, and he never thought he'd see a goalie as good as Demko until he saw what Jacob Fowler can do. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, Fowler is, is as good as I've seen. Uh, I'd, I'd have to look at, at the numbers. Uh, we've been really spoiled with some unbelievable goalies at BC over the last 25 years. Schneider, Demko, Wall, John Muse won two national championships. Um, obviously, Fowler is, is continu- continuing that tradition. Spencer Knight's numbers, I, I think, are better than anybody's, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, couldn't be, couldn't be more impressed with him. Um, I think, uh, it, it, I, I agree with you. After a certain point in that game, you just felt like it was going to be impossible for Michigan to get the puck pass. And you know, you saw Michigan's goalie kind of get out of position on a couple plays, particularly on uh, Perot's goal. You never have that with Fowler. I mean, um, there haven't been many times this year when he's been caught, caught totally off guard. Uh, when he sees the puck and he's got a good look at it, he's he's more often than not going to make the stop. And um, they're, they're really they're really lucky to have him. But I, I think he'd be the first to tell you that, you know, it probably it wasn't just him. I mean, I thought they got really good games tonight from uh, Minetian on defense. I'm so yep. impressed with the way he's played the last, uh, let's call it, you know, six, five, six games. I did not think he was having a great second half, but the last three, four weeks of the season, he's been – Maybe the best defensive defenseman. Uh, he's been uh, he saved a goal in the uh, in the second period on a cross ice pass. Michigan had deflected it, um, and you know overall, I thought they did a decent job of avoiding turnovers, of keeping Michigan to the outside, and um, when Michigan was able to to get something in those grade A areas, Fowler, Fowler was there to make the stops. So I want to ask you a question because I watched this team and there was a statistic. It was there four guys on BC. Um, I know it's the three freshmen and Gautier that are in the top 10 nationally in scoring. Yeah. You have Fowler, who is one of the best goalies in the country. And you have some excellent defensemen that are playing. Uh, Jim Paquette, who was once an uh, assistant, I believe assistant AD at BC says mm-hmm. he's watched a lot of college hockey and this is the best BC team that he's seen in 30 years. How do you feel about that? Well, look, they got one more game, but I, uh, I somebody asked me that during the game tonight. Is this the best team that you've seen? And I, I think top to bottom, but no matter what happens Saturday, I mean, they're playing a great team. They could very well lose that game. They've already lost to Denver this year. Yeah. Um, but I, regardless, I mean, this is the most complete team I've seen. I mean, I, they're just – uh, they come at you in waves. Uh, they have so many top end guys, um, and when they make mistakes, they've got a great goaltender to back them up. But you look at every statistical category: penalty kill, power play, goals per game, goals against per game. Um, really, the only category that they sh- that they struggle with is faceoffs, and it's you know I think they've gotten gradually better at them throughout the year. But it's the first two periods tonight. It seemed like Michigan was winning every faceoff. I was going to say, I I noticed you mentioned that. And once you mentioned it, I was watching, I was going, ooh, that seems to be a a bit of a weakness for them. The numbers tonight were, it was like 25 23, but man, I I, watching that game, it it did not feel like a a draw in terms of the faceoff. But um, top to bottom, I mean, they're they're, um, they're as good of a college hockey team that I've seen. Um, But we can, 
We'll save the legacy conversations for Saturday night if they can find a way to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. But yeah, you're looking at this team and where they're where they're at right now. Um, it's in. I compare them back to when I was watching. Like when my fandom was like the highest was the uh, the Gaudreau years, and mm-hmm. I look at that team and what I remember distinctly was you know. Gaudreau and, and and Kevin Hayes. Those were like the two yeah. big, but I look at this team and it's like, as you said, waves. It's like there, there's more than one line. There's more than a bunch of guys that can do it. And that's what impresses me the most is you got four guys that do what Hayes and Gaudreau did instead of just two. It's like you have double the amount of scoring power, just at top end scoring power that you had you know, 12 years ago. So I think that's something that I just, just someone who watches hockey has noticed, uh, but it's been a lot of fun. Now in our final segment, BC hockey blogger and I want to talk a little bit about the finals um, and what, what he thinks of Denver. I know BC played Denver already this season and uh, any last thoughts that he has, we'll get into all of that in just a moment. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer it gets to the first pitch. And with the way the Red Sox are playing lately, tickets are going to go down a lot faster than you'd expect. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. As I said, if you're thinking about going to Fenway, this is the perfect year to do it. Uh, Red Sox, uh, they uh, blew up. Uh, they let up five runs in the 10th inning tonight uh, and lost again. Um, and uh, their hot start is uh, starting to look in the past. But, hey, if you want to go to a baseball game, Fenway is always a fun place to go, right? So head on over to game time. You're going to get your seats. You'll know exactly where you're going to sit. You're going to get flash deals, zone deals, all sorts of great stuff. I love it. I used it to get BC football tickets. I'll probably use it to get some other tickets this summer as well. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first order. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. That's Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. This is Locked On BC. I'm your host, AJ Black. On Saturday, we have, it's, it's a big, big, big weekend for BC sports. We have uh, the City Connects baseball game. You have the spring football game. You have the national championship for hockey. I believe there's a women's lacrosse game. It's going to be packed. Now, if you're looking for our preview of the spring game, go back an episode. I had Mitch Wolf on last night get all that info on that episode but we're talking hockey tonight and on saturday bc is going to play for their hopefully their sixth national championship when they play the denver pioneers who i think the espn was calling the pios did i hear yeah. them say that i've never heard the, that before but the broadcast was horrendous <laughs> uh, but this is a team bc played earlier this year BC Hockey Blogger, tell me a little bit about Denver and how they're going to match up against BC. Um, and the fact that I, I actually am I'm burying the lead here. We we got denied our, I don't know if people are going to think of this of it this way, the dream matchup of BC versus BU in a national championship um, as BC, BU lost in overtime to Denver. Uh, floor's open. Talk about the... Talk about what happened today with Denver and BU and what you're thinking about BC and B, uh, Denver in the, in the championship game. I, I got to tell you, Adrian, I, I know a lot of people were talking about BC, BU and all that. And I, 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 I wanted Denver to win by 100 goals. I mean, I, I couldn't I, – <laughs> I was we were all jumping up and down when Denver won in overtime. So anytime BU lose, and there's, there's nothing better than watching BU lose. Besides BC winning, there's – doesn't get any better than watching BU fold in a big time game, um, but uh, Denver's a Denver's a hell of a team, and BC's lost what four games all year. One of them was to Denver at home. Yep. So um, you know BC will be favored. It will be tough to beat BC twice in a season, but Denver's you know it's pretty similar team, 
to BU and Michigan and that they've got some real high end talent. But I think the difference there is that Denver is a lot better, uh, a lot deeper on the back end than those two teams are. Um, they have a, a freshman defenseman, Z Booyam, who's going to be a top 10 pick in this draft. Um, I think he's maybe the best defenseman in college hockey. I think he probably is the best defenseman in college hockey. Um, he's going to be a real problem for them. Um, He's similar to Lane Hudson on BU, but he's probably a little more uh, well-polished in his own end. Um, and he's going to get a lot of ice time. They play him a lot. They play him with a, another really good defenseman, Sean Behrens. Um, and they create a lot of offense from their back end. Um, they've got talented players back there. Their goalie, Matt Davis, has had, I believe, a 97 save percentage in the NCAA tournament so far. Um, and look, they, they've had to... Every game that Denver's been in this NCAA tournament, they've grinded out. They had to go to Springfield in a row game against UMass on a short week, beat UMass. They had to beat a, a really tough, tough Cornell team two nights later uh, by a goal. And then obviously they just took down BU after getting dominated in the first period of that game. Um, so I know there's probably some people out there who wanted to see BCBU. But in my mind, seeing BU lose tops, tops almost everything else besides seeing BC win. So no complaints on my end for, on that one. I think a lot of BC fans yeah. are all, will agree with you on that, that they're just they're, You know, as much as you want to see the, the, the storyline matchup, watching BU fall on their face, too, is also kind of cathartic as well. It's up. Uh, it's, uh, all right. We're going to head out now. It's, almost, it's past midnight, and mm -hmm. we both – have other things to do. Any last thoughts on this game or any anything about BC Hockey that you wanted to bring up before we head out, BC Hockey Warrior? No, I mean, I, I, I'll i keep it short. Um, just really proud of this team. Happy for those guys, the coaches, the staff. Uh, it's been a long couple of years, but they've got one more, one more game to go. Uh, they brought a lot of excitement back to BC Hockey. Um, you know, I don't want to say they deserve to win the national title because no one deserves to win the national title, but yeah. They've been they've been the best team in college hockey this year, and I really hope that they can uh, put together one more 60-minute effort because they've been an absolute joy to watch all year, and it would be very nice passing BU in uh, all-time national titles. That, that's, that's lurking in the background. I think a lot of BC fans would love to see yeah. that too. So yeah. definitely check that out. We'll um... – if BC wins on Saturday, I will do a special episode and maybe I can get BC Hockey Blogger to jump on with me uh, to talk about that win. Uh, otherwise, we will see you on Monday. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll see yeah. you on Saturday, right? Um, right, right. Uh, but there's spring games to talk about. There's so much. Come over to Eagle Insider. We got a ton of uh, a ton of content. Uh, BC Hockey Blogger will have you know the, his recap of this game. I've been making all the playoff games free for you because I want you to read what he can do. Uh, so I'm going to make that free as well. Uh, check that out. Uh, follow me on Twitter at AJBlack247. BC Hockey Blogger, where can they find you on Twitter? I always forget your handle because I know you got hacked at one point. Yeah, that was that was not fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it's an at BC Hockey Blogger handle. Okay. You, your yeah. old one was the weird one then. Okay. Yeah, the uh, old one was a disaster. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. We'll be back again uh, soon to talk more BC hockey, talk more BC football, and everything in between. This is AJ Black. Follow me on AJ, uh, Twitter at AJBlack247. And thank you so much for listening to Locked On Boston College, your team every day.